Hi there, me, your friendly neighborhood almost stroke assaulter. So we're going to do another video. I'm going to upload it today. So it's going to be two days in a row. I know, haven't done that in a while. So we're going to discuss something I'll be honest, I was skeptical about until I tried one, weighted blankets. So for those of you that don't know what a weighted blanket is, think of a quilt that has six inch squares, relatively speaking, and then inside those squares, there are some form of evenly distributed weight. You can get them in 15, 20, 25, whatever the weight may be. Now, going to give a bit of a warning first about the misuse of weighted blankets. Because I, I did some research because I want to make sure I'm covering everything. And I could find two deaths that are directly related to the inappropriate use of a weighted blanket. Uh, one was in the States. A seven-month-old baby by the name of Owen was at a daycare. The daycare worker um, was told that Owen has been having difficulty sleeping, so she put a weighted blanket on a seven-month-old and walked away. And when she came back a few hours later, he was dead. So that is someone who's unskilled, untrained without any knowledge about weighted blankets and is not a medical professional who, who in my limited legal opinion committed murder. Then I live in Canada there was an autistic boy that suffocated in Quebec so there was a 50 uh, there was a, um, a 50 pound um, autistic boy who uh, was in a classroom he started to get a bit too vocal and a teacher wrapped him in a 39 pound weighted blanket, set a timer and walked away. When the teacher returned, he was dead. Again, in my limited legal opinion, that's not negligence because negligence requires knowledge. She committed murder, in my opinion. I could be wrong, but in my opinion, that's, that's, that's not negligence because negligence requires thinking. Um, this was a full-on act of just criminal stupidity. In my opinion, it's at least a second-degree murder charge, and she should have, anyone in that classroom should have their teaching credentials permanently revoked, and they should be spending the rest of their natural life in a prison cell. So because of that, um, there was a document, and I'll include the PDF. There was a warning document put out about the guidance and usage of weighted blankets. And it, it comes from uh, the Oxford Health uh, in the United Kingdom. And it says explicitly, weighted products, being it weighted blankets, weighted vests, any form of weighted item, should not be used in children with respiratory problems, meaning they don't breathe well. Cardiac problems, meaning their heart doesn't work so well epilepsy, skin problems including certain allergies, circulatory problems, physical learning or other difficulties which would prevent the child and having the ability to remove the blanket independently. The child's head and neck must be covered. The child's vital signs should be observable at all times. And I'm not meaning you're grabbing a BP cuff and a stethoscope. I mean you're watching them breathe. The child must not be rolled in the blanket. It should be placed over them. And if they're in a bed or like a cot situation, um, it should not be draped over the sides of the bed. And the child must have the ability to remove the blanket and get free of the blanket on their own accord with their own abilities. And they need to be instructed and re, uh, re, um, they, they need to be allowed to understand that if they start to feel uncomfortable, if they start to feel too hot, too heavy, they can take the blanket off at any time. A weighted blanket should never be used in a punitive fashion. Um, it's, it's not what it's there for. So we're going to discuss what weighted blankets do do, and we're going to discuss my limited experience with a weighted blanket, because I've only had one for about five days now. Um, so did a little bit of digging on the internet. I found a few studies. Now let's just talk about the studies that I did find. One, 
they're very limited sample size. They're like 42 people, 72 people, 83 people. Um, they're very limited time between six and eight weeks. So you're looking at studies that are 70 people, 30 people, 40 people. You're looking at studies that are 42 days in length. You're looking at a lot of studies that have uh, parental reports or parental diaries, um, elements that are very subjective. So I'm, so I'm not going to immediately say weighted blankets do not have value. I'm not going to say weighted blankets are not an effective tool. I'm just going to say this. Take the research for what it is. Very limited numbers of studies with very limited sample sizes, with very limited time periods in which the studies are conducted, with some of it being subjective reporting, being parental reports or user reports. There isn't a lot of hard data, right? And that's basically the where I'm going to leave that little warning at. So I will leave some links such as um, there is a study of 42 children between 8 and 13 years of age that had hyperactivity uh, disorder. And they showed in that study uh, that during a four-week study, they did notice children with ADD did settle more quickly. They, they spent, you know, historically more than 30 minutes trying to settle, more than 30 minutes trying to fall asleep. They found that with the use of weighted blankets that their sleep became uh, better regulated. Uh, it was easier to initiate initiate sleep. It was easy, easier to maintain sleep, right? Uh, there was a, um, another study of 73 children of which 67 completed the study. Uh, the participants were between five years to 16 years and 10 months. Uh, they all had autism spectrum disorder and severe sleep dis disabilities. Uh, that study, again, um, was looking to see if there was uh, any, any eff effic efficacy for the use of a weighted blanket or a weighted blanket product. And, you know, they found that there were no differences between um, the control group and, and the non-control group. So that study sort of found there's not a big difference. Um, I did find a seven page PDF on the positive effects of a weighted blanket and insomnia. That was 33 participants for six weeks um, that used a weighted chain blanket. And they did notice that the subjectively they reported using the blanket became more comfortable, a better quality of sleep. They felt more secure in their sleep. And so they felt that in conclusion, a weighted blanket may aid in reducing insomnia. Again, the key word there is may. So a lot of, because a lot of this is subjective reporting, it's difficult for these studies to come down with conclusive results that would be defendable, results that would be um, able to be peer reviewed and, and stand scrutiny. So that being said, I also found a PDF, and I'm going to leave the link down below. I'll be honest, I have not read all of it because it's 83 pages. Um, it's exploring the safety and effectiveness of the use of weighted blankets with adult populations. It's done by a occupational therapy association. It's 83 pages. Uh, if you wish to peruse it, feel free. Um, I didn't feel the need to simply because it's a resource that I'm going to use as a link in the video. Uh, for those of you that wish to have the opportunity to see it, and it's not really germane to the, the content per se, it will just give you some additional background information. Now, let's talk about my experience. Uh, a couple days ago, I had my actual birthday, my statutory birthday, not my stroke anniversary birthday. And a couple days before that, I was, I was having a bit of a rough patch um, because of the situation that's currently ongoing in my life. So my girlfriend, the wonderful lady that she is, said, I don't know, give you my your birthday present earlier uh, or early. So I said, sure, why not? And she goes, you know, this is something that will really make a difference. I think you can really use this. It was a weighted blanket. Now, friends of mine have 
used a weighted blanket. Coworkers of mine have used a weighted blanket. And I'll be honest, I never really quite understood why um, or the how. Um, I'm like, why would you get a weighted blanket? Won't that be heavy and uncomfortable and hot? And, 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 and how is it even going to do anything? So because I was having a pretty rough patch, um, the amazing, wonderful girlfriend that I have, Gave me my weighted blanket early, um, and I, I used it that night. I've been using it for five days so far. Uh, it no, I'm in Ontario. It's been a couple, pretty hot and humid a couple days, uh, so some nights sleeping with it on can be a bit uncomfortable. Simply because it gets hot and sticky, and not in a good way. Um, I'll be honest. I've noticed a significant difference with the use of the weighted blanket. Now my blanket I believe is only 15 pounds um, and if you are considering the use of a weighted blanket I'm going to suggest that you seek out your clinical team and you have the discussion with them more likely your occupational therapist would be or possibly your therapist therapist might be the correct avenue to have that discussion. So let's just talk about how that weighted blanket has impacted m me. So I've used it during the day when I'm having fatigue or a headache or feeling kind of confused or spinny. I've used the weighted blanket. It helps settle me down significantly more quickly. Um, it, it, it's kind of like you're lying underneath of a hug. It's, that sounds really granola-eating hippie-ish, hippie and I get that. And there's nothing wrong with you granola-eating hippies. Let me just put that out there. I'm not, I'm not throwing shade in your direction. Um... It, it legitimately feels like you're just being hugged and it helps calm me down um, and I haven't really been journaling about the weighted blanket I'll be honest but it, it, it does help um, have a calming effect at night uh, I get under the blanket and I again it has a, a fairly immediate and I I'm going to qualify that five to 15 minutes calming effect. It sort of slows you right down. Um, and then I've noticed my quality of sleep insofar as how it gets initiated. Uh, the, the, the time it takes me to settle and fall asleep has lessened. Uh, I've noticed the use of the medical marijuana, uh, CBD, THC oil. Now I'm in Canada. It is legal. I have a license. So don't worry about me promoting evilness because I'm in Canada. I have a medical marijuana license. So I found that I used less of that product to help me settle at night. Um, I found that if I do wake up in the wee hours of the night, I find by using the blanket, I settle much more quickly than I have historically. So, anecdotally, I'm going to say, yeah, the blanket's an amazing and wonderful thing. I'm going to say, anecdotally, it has made a significant difference. I'm going to say, experientially, it takes some time to get used to. Um, because I've got a blanket that weighs 15 pounds. Now, it's a fairly narrow blanket, so it's good enough for me. So my girlfriend should have extreme difficulty stealing it in the wee hours of the night. Um, although I think she might be kind of crafty and villainous, and I believe at some point she will abscond with my weighted blanket. Um, uh, my brother says I should only really worry when she gets me the weighted pillow. That's when I need to worry. Um, so I'm going to say experientially, the weighted blanket, it's, it's been amazing. It has definitively helped uh, both my sleep and my girlfriend's sleep. Because when I don't sleep well, we all know she doesn't sleep well. Um, so that that's a thing. Uh, but everything I'm saying is subjective. I, I don't have a real objective benchmark. There's no one, I'm not in a sleep lab or anything like that. So my sleep is better. I'm waking up uh, with a better sense of actually being rested. I'm able to settle more quickly. I'm able to reestablish sleep if I wake up in the night. 
um, my quality of sleep, the length of sleep, my, my total time of in sleep, it's better. Right? Take it for what you will. I'm not going to say a weighted blanket is good for everyone. Um, you will find some research. And some of it, again, is not very well supported, so I didn't include it in the link. You will find some places that, that will that will say that with a brain injury, a weighted blanket is suggested. Again, I'm going to say have that conversation with your occupational therapist and your neurologist. Um, because if you have circulatory problems, or if you have respiratory problems, or significant cardiac problems, a weighted blanket may not be for you. Again, I will leave the links for all the articles I've mentioned in the description down below. Um, so that way you can see everything that I've looked at. So that way you just don't know that I'm a talking head. But definitely, I would investigate a weighted blanket. Um, definitely. And if your clinical team believes it is the right option for you, get one. It, it, worst case scenario, you've got a slightly heavier blanket for winter. And then again, please do not uh, use weighted blankets with children. If, Like I've said before, and I will leave the link to the PDF uh, from that organization in the United Kingdom with their warnings about weighted blankets. So please use your weighted blankets responsibly and uh, use them only as they're indicated. And on that note, if you happen to know someone who's either had a stroke themselves or, or have had a brain injury or someone who's supporting someone who's had a stroke or a brain injury, please point the channel up to them. They may get some value out of the content that I generate. They may be able to find some information that they haven't found in another place. If you want to, if you would like me to generate some content or it's a topic you would like me to cover, please leave a, uh, a comment in the description down below. Uh, get in contact with me directly at strokeassaulter at gmail.com uh, or you can uh, get me on Twitter. Twitter description, My Twitter handle is in the description down below. And if you happen to see either in yourself or someone around you uh, the signs or symptoms of a stroke, that being someone who appears to be befuddled, confused, has uh, lost their sense of balance, uh, someone who has uh, vision problems, they see in grayscale, they can't see to one eye, they can only move their eyes in one direction, they see, again, a little dot in the world, uh, someone who has a facial droop, they have a noticeable slackening of the muscles in the face, they have the inability to raise both arms equally, effectively, or at all, they have a slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate word usage for situation or context, they can't smile equally, effectively, or at all. They're unable to uh, stand unaided. Uh, they have general body weakness or weakness on one side. Please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.